Jeremy S. Cook here, and last year I came up with a controller that could play and pause songs and, and control the volume of my audio as needed. As cool as that was, I thought I could come up with something even better. This new controller can play and pause songs, turn the volume around, and fast forward and go back in the songs being played. That was neat, but even that wasn't quite good enough for this build, and I made it so that it can actually control a game called Slither.io by moving the mouse around in a controlled pattern. I built this device around a Pico board, which acts kind of like an Arduino Leonardo, along with an I2C encoder that allows for volume control and play and pause functionality without having to deal with much of the low level functioning of actually dealing with the encoder itself. Everything was laid out on a breadboard, then diagrammed, and then transferred to a perf board later. Before I permanently soldered everything, I went over most of the software where I was still in breadboard state. That, that let me work out some of the kinks before I had everything kind of permanently attached. I'll go over this software a little bit more a little bit later, for, but for now you can see me playing Slither.io and trying to actually failing at it pretty badly. I'll blame the software for that. So besides that, I made a 3D printed case for it. You can see the, the knob for it that I printed out. It was based on the old one, the outside case, which I actually did not put enough room on for the micro SD connector. I ended up modifying that with a Dremel tool, which was not pretty. Another modification I did was I put four holes in the bottom so I could pop out the, the perf board if, if I needed to for modifications or whatever. The middle part, I, I put a, a square hole for the encoder so I could fit that in nicely. And then I put a ring where I put a NeoPixel ring of, of 12 RGB LEDs so it could shine through. There's the outside being printed out. Looks really nice. And then the inside, the first version had the round hole and the second version, the square hole and the round outside. And then there's the knob being printed. Everything was monitored nicely using Octoprint. And there's me modifying the bottom for the four holes. With that done, I popped in the perf board to make sure everything would fit all right. And everything pressed in nicely. It's a nice, nice press fit. Holds it pretty securely. And then it pops out with needed, when needed with just a screwdriver. Here you can see the basic parts of the on the perf board. Turned it over and then bit the pins down to keep everything secure. Held in nicely, and then after that it was on to soldering. Created a bank of, of positive voltage. Everything's kind of connected there to that nice little bank. Connecting the, the wires together, the, the buttons, those are the signals, the, the yellow wires. And the nice thing was, since I had everything laid out on the breadboard beforehand, everything, once it went to the perf board, only had a couple small mistakes that I did in the whole thing. So that was pretty nice to see it all come together. There's some resistors going from the I2C encoder to positive. And then I soldered on the top, including the NeoPixel ring. That all fit in pretty nicely. With everything soldered up, I placed it in the enclosure and it was pretty much ready to go. So the interesting thing about this whole system was that I thought it'd be a pretty easy project, but like many things, it became a lot more complicated that I got in, as I got into it. The code itself was probably the most involved code that I've done. It's 170 something lines of code, well, I guess with spaces and stuff, but that's not quite what I originally envisioned. One thing that was critical to this, of course, was using this I2C encoder. That took some figuring out how to use that correctly, including the fact that you actually have to have certain other files in the directory with it. That may be old hat to you, but it was a new thing to me using that. The other thing with this is that you have to use the HID project library, which, which allows you to use controls like, like positive and negative volume and skip and go back on the songs. From there, the other challenge was the second mode, which you get to by pressing all three buttons at once, which actually centers the mouse on a certain on kind of an axis and then it moves around to control a snake or maybe a, a Tempest game or a Pong, whatever. I, I've only tr tried it with Slither.io and it works pretty well, but I think certainly could have other applications. The thing that was complicated about this was that I actually had to make an array of 21 positions. There's 20 positions on the encoder because it loops back to zero. I had to figure out 
what the 20th position would be. So had some interesting code there. Just everything here is mapped to the 12 position NeoPixel ring. And you can see the, the code here actually I'd do it all in Excel or open office as, as actually the case, LibreCalc. So I'll put the code up on GitHub if you want to examine that, but for now I'll leave you with some footage of me slithering around on slither.io. See me snaking around nicely there. So if you enjoyed this, be sure to give it a thumbs up or maybe subscribe or even leave me a comment. Thanks for watching. This is Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.